truc pour qu'on te dise qu'on t'aime, enfin gâté. Oh, toi Tout le monde me gâte. Personne ne m'aime. Personne. Dans quel état elle se met Je me mets en noir. Pour vos chansons, je serai dans la note. Un cri d'amour. Seul l'aide est livide. Voilà. Si je pouvais m'arracher la tête avec. Tu veux que je vienne Non. Je veux être seule. Cléo, je vous rappelle que c'est mardi. C'est mardi 18, je fais ce qui me plaît. Hi, I'm Matt Nguyen. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about Agnes Varda's Cleo from 5 to 7. In this video, we will be talking about Cleo's initial step into her transformation to her true self, better known as individualization. He tells her that she is spoiled and self-pitying, and she responds by saying that she is spoiled, but nobody loves her. It's clear that Cleo doesn't love herself either. She is not quite satisfied with her life. Well, who can blame her when all the people around her are waiting for her to fail? Cleo goes behind a black curtain, which usually indicates that something is coming to an end, as well as being used to hide behind much like the black veil at a funeral. As she pulls the curtain back, it's hard to miss the one thing that is on that stark white wall. Who is Edith? Piaf. Upon further research, I've discovered that Edith was a French singer between the 30s and 60s. She also had songs about love and despair. She also got into lots of trouble like car accidents, alcohol and drugs, and unfortunately also suffering from liver cancer, in which she would eventually die at the age of 47. Huh. Déjà vu. All from this one record, we found the clear inspiration for the story of Cleo. So she puts on a black dress, and at this point we all know what this means. She's getting ready for a funeral. But who died? When she's talking about the song that was written, she calls it Ashen, Pale, and Alone. But the way she looks at the mirror, at herself when she says that, it feels like she's talking about herself. But if we take a second look at when she looks into the mirror, it very eerily looks like she's looking at the audience, as if she's trying to tell us something. Perhaps she feels trapped in this body of hers and is dying to get out. We can very obviously tell that she's very desperate to become a different person. She's tired of being Cleo. She also says that she wants to be alone just how she described the song that she hated so much. And if you look, she's putting on that black hat that she was told earlier that she could not wear. In the scene, she takes multiple steps into her individuality, into becoming who she really wants to be. As we were shown in the beginning of the film, time is very precious to her. But it is at this moment where she finally takes time into her own matter. Now we're going to go back to the top part of this scene right here because she can easily pick up any piece of jewelry she wants. But to me, this piece of jewelry resembles a stopwatch. Can you guys see it? Here, I'll put a picture up for you guys. If you still don't see it, here it is right on top of that necklace. You can't convince me otherwise. All of a sudden, it feels like she has control of her own time, instead of everyone else around her telling her what to do. She even tells Angel off. Now, as she's putting her new Léo, clothes on, je vous rappelle que Angel mardi. tells her that it's Tuesday, mardi, je fais ce qui me plaît. in reference to what she said to her in the hat shop. It's clear that in this point of the film, she's a completely different person, treating everyone differently and doing what she wants to do. 